Welcome back everyone. I'm Gwen Shapiro with Confluent. Let's see how we can make Kafka go faster. The key to making a system go faster is to identify where it is going slowly. Find those performance bottlenecks and eliminate them. Real-time applications require high throughput or low latency. The process we will go through is to start by monitoring your current performance to understand what is your baseline. Then we will use the control center metrics to identify those performance bottlenecks. And the key metrics to watch for those bottlenecks are request latency, network pool usage, and request pool usage. We will learn how to use this information to tune the system and improve performance. Let's get to it. The key dashboard you want to look for that is the produce and fetch request latency breakdown. You get to it by clicking on the latency chart on the main system health dashboard. And this shows you the life cycle of every request so you can identify where is time spent. What is Kafka doing that makes this request processing slower than you'd like it to do? When you look at the circle of request lifespan, you'll start by looking at the total request latency that will be right there in the center. This is the total time it took Kafka to process the request. Usually you're looking at this screen because this number is higher than what you want. And then you start looking at the breakdown. The first section you look at is the request queue. This is the time spent in the queue while waiting for a thread in Kafka to handle this request. If this value is high, it usually means that there is not enough IO threads or not enough CPU to handle all requests coming in to the Kafka broker. The next section is the time spent handling the request on the local machine. If this time is high, it usually means that the thread is spending too much time writing this value to disk or reading a value from disk. The next part to look at is sending responses. The first thing that Kafka does before sending a response is wait for other brokers to respond to it. So you're sending a request to the leader, the leader is waiting for other brokers to either acknowledge the request or to send it more information so it can send you more information. A high value there can indicate a slow network connection or that the other brokers are very busy. This can also be an indication that the consumer is caught up to the end of the log and is waiting for other brokers to commit more data so it can send you new information. After we have a response to send you, the response goes on to the response queue. The time spent in the queue is the time that we are waiting for a network thread to become available to send a response over the network. If this value is high, it may mean that you are missing some network threads and need to add few more. And then the last uh, chunk of time is spent sending a response back to the client. This is not time spent on the network. It is only time spent placing the request by a thread on the network stack of the operating system. High values there usually indicates that the operating system is completely out of CPU. After we know where time is being spent, we can also check how many resources we have available because usually we spend time waiting because we're lacking resources. The two important resources to look at is the network pool usage, which is the fraction of time in which our network processor threads are busy. If we see that they're busy over 70% of the time, it can usually indicate a bottleneck that can lead to high queue times. So consider adding more network threads. Same thing for the request pool. If we see that the request handler threads are more than 70% busy, it can mean that you have a performance problem and you shouldn't consider increasing the number of threads in the pool. Now, you cannot always just go and increase the number of threads. First of all, you only have that many CPUs. You shouldn't uh, increase it significantly more than you have CPUs. The threads will have nothing to run on. The other thing you want to do is understand why are you suddenly running out of threads. If it's more requests to process, that's fantastic. But if it's you're running out of threads because they're doing more work, for example, they maybe they're reading more data from disk, you should check did the disk become slow? Maybe I have a hardware problem. So you usually want to drill down a bit more and not just blindly increase the number of threads. Those are just a few tips for tuning performance. In the next section, we're going to wrap things up and show you how to apply what you learned in a real world scenario.